Hello students, now we are going to discuss about importance of early identification and intervention. Catch them young and teach them well is the slogan reflected all over the world for the education of children with special needs. There are a lot of advantages over identification of children with visual problems at their young ages. Most of the eye problems are medically treated and cured. After medical correction, most of the children would see normally. Some medically untreatable conditions of eye defect lead to blindness. However, a very few children would suffer from total blindness and most of the children may have residual vision. Therefore, early identification of child with visual problems will help the child to go for medical and educational interventions. Here we are going to discuss in detail about early identification, intervention and selective educational placement towards the children with visual problems. Early identification of vision problems. Here let us discuss the importance of vision and early identification of children who suffer from visual problems. Early identification is the first step to set the intervention programs. Importance of vision and learning about vision loss. Although every one of our senses plays a role in early development, vision certainly seems to lead the way. Early bondage of the child with parents is based on the child's ability to make eye contact and sustain a gaze with his parents, respond to their voices by gurgling and cooing. An infant tries to move is because he or she sees the an infant tries to move is because he or she sees something. He or she learns that things and people exist in the world primarily because he or she sees and hears them come and go. He or she visually tracks an object he or she pitches to the ground. He can inspire his parents to play with them by making eye contact, the earliest form of conversation. He learns about size, shape, color, functions of objects social interactions and so much more just by looking at the world at work. Early development has critical links to a child having full use of his or her vision. When this sense does not work perfectly or not very well in early days of the child, experience and concept learning are impaired. As we said above, much of the sensory information that is vital to children's development comes through the sense of vision. During the first three years of a child's life, major neural networks are being formed in the brain. Much of this development comes from vision, which allows us to know about things and people in the world. After the first three years, development of these neural networks becomes slower. Skills that may be gained in early intervention cannot be made as quickly when the child is older. For these reasons, children should be regularly checked for vision problems. We know that even mild problems with this sense can have major impact on learning. Due to visual field loss, he or she may constantly be stumbling over things. This has great impact on self-concept. A child who is sensitive to light may not enjoy or feel secure playing out of doors. Every child with or without a disability should have regular and periodic vision checking. If the child is severely disabled, this can be even more important since this other senses 
may not be as useful in compensating for what they miss visually. In fact, this is so important that schools should have vision screening at regular intervals throughout the remainder of the child's educational career. Now we will discuss about risk factors and behavioral indicators for vision loss. At risk factors, a child is at risk for vision loss if the child encounters the factors such as family history of vision loss such as retinoblastoma or albinism, malformation of the eye, prematurity and low birth weight birth trauma, head trauma, congenital viral or bacterial infections such as rubella, CMV, syphilis, group B streptococcus infection, toxoplasmosis, chickenpox, HIV, meningitis, encephalitis, hyperthyroidism, microcephaly. Behavioral indicators the behaviors which indicate the child's vision loss are the child does not have eyes or eyelids that look typical, the child does not recognize caregiver's face or smile in response to their smiles around the age of 3 months, he does not get excited when he sees his bottle or other familiar objects he likes. At 4 to 6 months, the child eyes does not seem to move together when following an object or person. The child may turn or tilt his or her head in unusual positions when looking at an object. The child may hold an object very close to his eyes. The child may overreach or underreach for objects. Accurate reaching usually occurs around 6 months. Next, we will discuss about symptoms of vision problems. Half of all blindness or eye disorders can be prevented or cured. Young children with vision problems often do not know that the way they see the world is not the way everyone sees it. Yet, vision problems affect 1 in 20 preschoolers. They also affect 1 in 4 school children. Without early detection and treatment, children's vision problems can lead to permanent vision loss, learning difficulties. Any changes in the appearance of eyes or vision should be investigated further. Some examples include unusual trouble adjusting to dark rooms, difficulty focusing on near or distant objects squinting or blinking due to unusual sensitivity to light or glare, change in color of iris, red rimmed, encrusted or swollen lids, recurrent pain in or around eyes, double vision, dark spot at the center of viewing, lines and edges appear distorted or wavy, excess tearing or watery eyes, dry eyes with itching or burning and seeing spots, ghost like images. The indications of potentially serious problems that might require emergency medical attention are sudden loss of vision in one eye, sudden hazy or blurred vision, flashes of light or black spots, halos or rainbows around light, curtain like blotting out of vision and loss of peripheral vision. If any signs of potential eye problems are noticed, an eye doctor should be consulted for a complete eye examination. We should remember that even if there are no signs, regular eye examinations are recommended, especially for those with some chronic health conditions such as diabetes and high blood pressure. Early detection and treatment can be the key to preventing sight loss. Therefore, early identification of vision problem is very much essential to prevent vision loss and preserve the eyesight. Early identification is naturally leads to early intervention. Early intervention programs. 
Early intervention programs or the planned programs based on the onset and nature of impairment and the ability of the child to cope with the environment and academic aspects. Early intervention programs are to be carried out with the services of a group of personnel from the medical and special education and rehabilitation fields. Let us discuss about early intervention, meaning of early intervention. Meaning of early intervention. The term early intervention refers to services given to very young children with visual problems, generally from birth until the child turns 3. For this reason, these programs are sometimes called birth to 3 or 0 to 3. Services included medical treatment, follow up service, visional efficiency development training on daily living skills and mobility. The hope is that these services provided early will address any delays in development so that the child will not need services later on. At age 3, if a child still needs help, he or she might be referred to the special education program. Now let us discuss about the classification of intervention programs. Early intervention programs are classified as vision screening, medical intervention and educational intervention. All these programs go simultaneously for prevention of eye deficit, restoration of vision, development of vision efficiency. The number one, vision screening. All children should be screened for possible vision problems, especially those under the age of three with a suspected or identified risk factor regardless of severity. The initial screening should be conducted by trained professional on vision screening procedures. The trained personnel may be low vision specialist, special teacher, rehabilitation workers and village nurses. Identified cases of visual problems are referred to the medical personnel who would attend to thorough eye examination. The vision screener is able to document visual performance during the screening, identify potential problems in visual development, communicate the results of the screening to the family and appropriate professionals, ensures the continuation of the screening process if needed and make referrals and follow up on all referrals. How should the screening be conducted? To begin, establish a rapport with the child, position the child appropriately, allow for a variety of communication methods, provide extra response time for the child, use methods of observation that follow the child's lead and if necessary observe within the child's home or school environment. Include test items that are familiar and are interesting to the child. Screen with a team approach, for example, parent, caregivers, teachers. Provide opportunities for rescreening whenever the results are inconclusive due to illness, fatigue, or other confounding factors. To test, review the medical history of the child and his or her family noting high risk populations, current use of medications and significant medical findings. Elicit parent or caregiver observations of child in different natural environments. Encourage the parent or caregiver or teacher or someone who knows the child to note any concerns about the child's vision. Use screening tools that address appearance of the child's eyes, pupillary response to a light source, ocular muscle balance, oculomotor skills such as fixation, visual pursuit and convergence, visual field, near, middle and distance acuity measurement. Now let us discuss about possible outcomes of the screening process. Outcome 1. No problems are observed 
and there are no concerns of the parent or caregiver or screener. The child passes the screening and is screened again at the next recommended age. Outcome 2. One or more of the high risk conditions have been identified, but there are no observable problems with visual performance. On the day of the screening, information should be given to the family and the local service provider about high risk indicators of visual problems, how to observe visual performance and resources to contact if vision problems are observed at a later date. Outcome 3. A prompt referral to an eye care specialist, for example, ophthalmologist, optometrist should be made if the child has an observable eye condition such as excessive tearing, eye deviation, drooping eyelid, cataract and so on. The child has observable difficulty with one or more behavioral items on the screening tool. The parent or caregiver or teacher or screener still has questions and the team is unable to make a determination of whether the child is having visual difficulty. We have to remember that this does not mean that the child is untestable. It does mean the screener is responsible for referring the child on to someone else for more in-depth evaluation. Screening procedures for young children should use family centered practices that is communicating in a language that the family understands, informing families about the purpose procedures and the results of the screening process and gathering information from families in a simple and respectful way. Next we will discuss about the second intervention program that is medical intervention. There are many possible defects or diseases of the visual system but fortunately many of them appear after the first few years of life. There are still many malformations, defects, diseases, infections and disorders that can affect the visual system in infants and toddlers. As it is presumed that medical follow up to screening will identify and prescribe treatment. The medical professionals will take care of the treatment aspects for the diseases and defects of the eyes. After the medical treatment, still the child may have visual defect. Further intervention programs should be planned for the restoration of remaining sight and development of visual efficiency. The third intervention program is educational intervention. Educational intervention includes the preschool training such as development of daily living skills, mobility skills, visual skills and placement of the child into the formal school system. The trained teacher or rehabilitation worker who qualified on visual impairment takes the child with visual impairment for training on various skills required by the child. He or she also provides the counseling for the parents, family members, relatives and neighbors about the development of the child with visual impairment and their role on carrying the child. He develops the pre-educational skills such as tactile discrimination, other sensory development, communication skills, mobility, social interactions. All these training will be helpful for making appropriate placement of the child in the educational program. Next we will discuss about selective educational placement. After the early intervention, the parents have to select the educational program based on the recommendations of the special teacher or rehabilitation worker who give training for the child. The educational placement is based on several aspects like whether the child is totally blind or low vision, whether the child has multiple disability, whether the child has any other problems related to academic learning, whether the child has psychological problems, whether the parents are willing for his or her education, whether the educational program is available nearby the child's residence. To bring the child into any educational program, the proper counselling is essential for the child 
as well as parents. Role of the teacher As a special teacher, you should play the vital role in the placement of the child with visual impairment in any educational setting. The activities to be performed by the special teacher or teacher who takes care of the child with the special needs in school are number 1. Catch them young. The children with visual impairment should be caught early so as to educate them early and properly. As we discussed in this unit, early identification of children with visual problems solves the several problems like medical treatment, training on daily living skills and mobility, preschool training. Based on the training and assessment, the teacher will come to the conclusion that where this child with visual impairment be admitted for education. Number 2. Functional Vision Assessment Once an infant or toddler has been identified with a visual impairment, completion of a functional vision assessment is one of the primary roles of the teacher of the visually impaired. The goal of the functional vision assessment is to determine what and how the child sees and what can be done to best facilitate learning through the visual sense. Number 3. Guidance and Counseling The parents should be convinced for taking the child to the educational program. Most of the parents give over protection and some neglect the child. Both these attitudes spoil the development of the child. The developmental milestones are to be explained to them. They should be given confidence that this child can also come up well in life with proper education. The teacher should also explain the limitations of vision loss. He should guide the parents what to do with the child at home. After proper counseling only, the child can be taken to the educational program. Number 4. Identifying the educational program. The teacher should have the knowledge about the educational programs available to the children with visual impairment in their locality or other places. As far as possible, the child with visual impairment should be placed with the other non-disabled children who attend the school nearby. Number 5. Persuade the school authorities. The school authorities should be convinced for getting admission. The teacher should explain them with government orders, government policies, constitutional provisions. That the education is the birthright of every child and the child is first and disability next. He should also explain how this child will learn in the school. If it is a special school, he should give the details about the child. Number 6. Trapping the facilities. The teacher should trap the facilities for educating the child with visual impairment. The child needs transportation, food and cloth, educational aids and devices, scholarship. All these things should be arranged for educating the child in the school. Number 7. Classroom accommodation. Inclusive schooling is encouraged and mostly accepted. The existing practices also support for the admission of the child into inclusive setting. Before placing the child at the classroom, prerequisite skills for classroom accommodation should be developed among the child. The plus curricular skills are to be developed to cope with the regular classroom work. If the child is slow and having any other difficulties in learning, the child should be placed in the special school for developing required training to accommodate in the regular school. All the special care at home should be given by the teacher with the help of parents to develop the skills of the child. Number 8. Follow up and evaluation. In every step of child's progress in academic and social skills, the teacher should have the follow up activities to provide the appropriate service. The teacher should evaluate the performance of the child in a specific period of time. The report of the evaluation should be shared with school authorities and parents. The child is constantly encouraged in the education. Therefore, the selective educational placement refers to finding suitable educational program 
based on the requirement and ability of the child with visual impairment and placing the child at the classroom of the school with appropriate skill development and assistive devices. Students, so far we have discussed on the importance of early identification and intervention, classification of intervention programs and role of a teacher in the education placement of children with visual impairment. I hope as future teachers you can play an important role in identifying the visually impaired and in guiding them for appropriate educational placement. Thank you.